Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. All right, I really screwed up folks. I, I, we were talking for a while here and then uh, this is Albert Reynoso and Hi. I forgot to start it. See, I mean I started it, I thought I started it, but I didn't start it and now it's recording. Beautiful. Uh, of course, because everybody can hear the recording, obviously. Yes, yes. Anyway, so uh, so let's try and reconstruct what we were talking about. You've got well, I just said that I have a, a schedule to keep, which I very much don't have usually in my life because yeah. my son's coming over and I have to put some uh, wiper blades on his car mm -hmm. and he has limited time. Uh, so w I wanted to plan this so that we can get it done and do that at the same time, well, right after. At this. the same time, why don't you teach him how to do the wiper blades? Well, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, so He's that he never to... has to come over again and have you do the wiper blades. Well, he will come over again uh, for something. So if he needs help on the wiper blades again, he gets it. I haven't had a car in 15 years. Right. Okay, which is amazing for me to say because... You know, I grew up in California, and the first thing you wanted to have was a pair of wheels under your feet, you know? You have to have one. Yeah. So I, 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 even when I lived in New York the last time, I owned a car here, you know? but And you could back then. Well, not really. If you left out in the street overnight, it, it, only, only not all the parts will be there. Well, that's a possibility, Okay. Yes. In fact, in fact... What I did once is I, I started parking in a lot right next to my building, all right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided I was sick of these people. I had a, a Volkswagen that had wind, wind wings on it, and they'd always break the wind wings. Wind wings? You know, you, you had the windows, and you had those little wings on the side that opened up windows. Do you remember them? Oh, right, yes, I yeah. do remember that. Yo, those were cool. I like that. Yeah, well, this was a Volkswagen station wagon or whatever and it, uh -huh. it it had those and they would always just bust those and yeah, get yeah. into the car and then get in yes so after a while i just didn't replace them oh you know? come on in you put know? a sign because in. Come I, on in. I left it open for you so i'd leave it open so they could get in mm -hmm. right and then i made sure there was nothing inside the car right right okay so when they went in there they wouldn't get anything the only thing is, when you don't leave anything in your car, they get pissed. So well, one they, time they, they set the know. they uh, tried it's open. To, they tried to set the car on fire and burned a oh, whole seat. No. Okay, but this one time somebody call calls me up and says, "Is that your car out the street?" <laughs> in flames? I, no, out in the street. And I looked down. I had a balcony. I looked down. And I, Son of a bitch! And I went down. And I got the car. Apparently, they got so pissed, they rolled the car into the street. Oh, in the middle of the street? In the middle of the street. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's no good. So. Well, now you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is worry about whether you're sitting in urine on the subway. Well, what I was saying is that when, when, you, when you do it, make sure he learns what's happening, okay? Yes, and that's that he the, never that's has it. to call you again. But if he calls you again, you should say to him, you try putting them on. I showed you how. You try putting them on. If you can't, let me know. Well, that's that's what we've done in the past with oh, really? light bulbs that need to be changed and things. Yes, it's fine. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's the yeah, nice game. You had to replace other uh, things in his car? Or we just replaced the car because the, his last car went goodbye. So Goodbye? This is a, this is a, a new car for him. So. Oh, really? Brand new or just a used? Not brand new. No. <laughs> brand new who can afford brand new cars anymore i can oh well good for you, <laughs> good for you money bags <laughs> you know i wish and i were you still take the subway no i don't we don't take the subway oh you don't go anywhere right how can uh, you take the subway? With, i don't go anywhere but i don't right. take the subway never no no, no. There, there, there are people down there pushing old people onto the tracks you know it's that's, not that's, good it's not that's good, good way to get rid of them there was a time <laughs> when the subways in this 
in this city were terrible. And then they got good. Remember, they got yes, they good. Did. They got yeah. really good. I loved them when they were when they were dirty and 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 graffiti uh, was all over. Oh, them. I thought the graffiti. I was in high school at the time, I was and one I loved people that. who thought the graffiti was beautiful. I was still yeah, I did too. first time I was in New York. You'd see a a train go by to be on the express track, and they have all the graffiti on it. It was like this blur of mm -hmm. color, you know, that went yeah. past. But they didn't like that. That's horrible. That's destruction of city property. So they finally, you know, they, what they did is they built the subway cars so they had a thing on them that, that you couldn't really do. If you did graffiti on them, it could, would just be wash off no matter what kind of stuff right. you put on there. So they stopped doing graffiti because it wasn't worth their time. You know? And they also clean, clean, started cleaning the cars up immediately when they had graffiti on them. Oh, so yeah. It would be pointless for the artist to, well, to do their thing. So well, they decided, let's go to walls instead. The cleanest the cars ever were, though, was right after COVID. Because they went in and they, you know, they sanitized everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, and I remember they were very clean when we went to the Republican convention. Yeah. They were very clean. Did we take a subway over there? No, we took the subway every day to work. Oh, I see. Did I? Yeah, I did. You remember Madison Square Garden? We used to work there. It, no, we didn't work at Madison. Oh, no, Square. not not at Madison Square Garden. But we went to Madison Square Garden for the convention. We had the yeah. We what happened is I I could take the F train, right? And the F train would take me right to Rockefeller Center and I'm leave mm -hmm. me off right in front of uh, 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 where Sirius was it? I work Sirius XM right. or. Do you, do you call it Sirius XM or do you still call it Sirius? Oh, Sirius XM. Because when we went there, it was Sirius. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, but no, uh, but I would take a subway down there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, no, but in the morning, I would take a car. I had a guy who picked me up every morning. Mr. Moneybags. Well, no, you know, it, because it's Marjorie, more well, Marjorie yes. was also going to work too. So oh, right. it was two for one, right? So he, he would drive me and leave me off at my place, and then he'd go a couple more blocks and leave her off where she was getting off. And it cost us 20 bucks every morning, but it was worth it, you know, not having to take the subways that time of the morning, which don't run as often as the rest of the day. No, but your, your, your poor little producer had to take the subway to get there at 5 in the morning and, you know, do the prep work and everything yeah well you did all the work for me i just did the show yeah exactly that's the way it usually works it's the it uh, i was the puppet master i had yeah. my hand up your anus and uh you did the show and, Hi, he, it's yeah, and this was all that i had as backup this <laughs> this guy here that was yeah. my backup uh uh you know letterman had hundreds, done worse. Uh, letterman had hundreds of people i had Albert. you had this yeah but you did a nice. Well, you had other people too. There were there were at least one other person usually. Well, I remember Lynn Samuels always griping that I didn't do prep. Yeah. And my only thing I thought was, well, I have somebody who does prep for me. Right. Prep is explain prep to the audience so they who may not know these technical terms we're using. Well, it depends on, on who's doing the show, but essentially it's making sure that they're taken care of with information they need, should they need to go to that information to complete the show. And that can be anywhere from writing down uh, things that are going on in the world for that day or just uh, making sure the studio is set up. I know I had some guys that I produced that didn't need anything written at all. They just wanted to make sure that the uh, board was working properly and everything was technically working. It, it differed, but but you got uh, you got the full treatment. You got the big uh, the well. The I pre you, you were the platinum first, platinum. but you were the first producer I ever had who did a prep sheet for me. Well, you know, it, it, it all depends. Like I said, on what the show is, and that kind of show I think required to have the the latest information. And the latest information on a morning show comes from all the the newspapers that you look at, and you can't possibly read all the newspapers. So I got in there an hour or two earlier and and uh, um, put together. A, a, a rundown of things that were going on in it the world. It was a beautiful prep sheet. That's I wish I had kept some of those. 
I have some still. You and and I put little pictures, icons on yeah, it. So you put pictures and, you know. You know, when I was hired uh, to do, to produce Alan Combs' show at Fox, Fox Radio, mm-hmm. the person that hired me was very impressed. He said, well, look at this prep sheet. It's very easy to see what's going on, international news and sports. And, and then within there, you had things like a guy's picture to, so you know what the story was about. It's about that guy, you know. And uh, so, but the easier it is for you, the easier it is for me. How long, tell them how long you lasted doing Alan Combs' show. Uh, well, I think two days. May, may have been one, <laughs> but, but two days. Now, yeah. it wasn't that there was anything wrong with Alan. Alan was the sweetest guy. No, no, guy. Alan was great. Was Alan, the sweetest the guy in the world. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I think, if I remember correctly, he was so nice that he called me up and yeah. said, we're thinking of hiring yeah. Albert Reynoso. Do you mind? Because yeah, he, he didn't, was, he he didn't was even my say, producer. tell me about him. He, he said, do you mind? Yeah. Yeah, and I said not at all. I said I, you know, he deserves to work. It's sad that they fired him at Sirius XM, you know. And I said you're getting one of the best producers you'll ever have, you know. So if you I wanted, bet I, but he wanted to know that I wasn't going to get mad at him for hiring you. No, well, that's yeah. very nice of him. He was a nice guy. I should have said yes and seen what happened. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'd have lasted three days. Instead three days of- instead. But what happened was. Tell them why you were, why you, why you left. You actually left. Well, I, I was given a choice. I, I was doing. They, a, they a brought podcast. him in. They brought him into the office, right? Right. I was doing no. I I was doing a podcast on GabNet with you, mm-hmm. not with you. Yeah. In the evenings, on a daily basis, right. and um, after I was hired, one of the uh, radio publications. Noted that I'd been hired by Alan for by Fox uh, Radio, Alan Combs, and I also do a podcast at night uh, for for GabNet. Um, so my my then new one day new boss called me in and said, "I saw that you're doing a podcast. You can't do that." And I said, "Well, why not?" And they said, "Well, that's just not allowed. You can't do something for somebody else." I said, "Well, I didn't see anything that said that." I said, "And, and you know, you know, Alan does a podcast for somebody else, and so does Sean Hannity, and so do a lot of people for other companies, not even Fox." And they said, "Well, you can't do that. So if you if you <laughs> insist you, that you want to do that, then then we can't have you here." I said, "Well, then you can't have me here because I'm I'm not going to give up my podcast, and I don't I just don't think that's uh, an equitable situation." Well, I thought that was the nicest thing you ever did for me. I mean, you were. Well, doing- I didn't do it for you. Well, I did it. I did it because, well, yeah, it, 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 it did have to do with you, but, but, but it, it had to do with being told to do something that other people were doing, you know, yeah, you that you suddenly couldn't do. And you weren't even on the air. So it wasn't like you were oh, an it was an internet or thing. Sean Hannity or whatever. You were a producer. Didn't matter if you did a podcast. Apparently it did to them. Well, that's, that's Fox, you know, uh, mm-hmm. So you were out of there in two days. Yes. Yeah. As soon as as soon as I said no, I, I'm going to continue to do my podcast. They said, "Well, we wish you well." I did said, you Did you get a reaction from from uh, uh, Alan at all on all of this? No, I immediately emailed Alan and told him the situation. I said, "I, I apologize for having to have you go through this process, and uh, it's it's just unfortunate." But that's that's what Fox says that yeah that I have to do. So. I, I can't. I, and he was very nice about it. He said, well, I understand, unfortunately. He probably knew the company as well as you did. I'm you sure know. he knew it better than I did. Probably better than you did. But I mean, mm-hmm. in the respect to this kind of thing, he probably, yeah. he probably he had to put up with a lot of crap while he was at Fox. I'm sure he did. And I, you know, once said to him, I said, I got to hand it to you. I mean, I said, you're in the right place. No matter what anybody says about you as a liberal, you're in the right place. Because somebody has to be at Fox speaking the truth. And as long as they hire you to do it. Not anymore. I said, as long as they hired you to do it, so be it. And he was always getting crap from the left. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, how can you work over there? Well, that's the one place he needed to be. Yeah. You know. Uh... 
I often said that you know that you go you always do things where you shouldn't be doing them. Like I started doing a talk show on AM radio long before anybody was doing talk shows on AM radio. I went over to WMCA uh, and I did my show. And they said, well, why are you there? Why don't you go to WBAI, which is like the really liberal outfit in town? And yeah. I said, because over WBAI, I wouldn't be doing anything different. When I'm at WMCA, I'm doing right. something different. Mm -hmm. And that's the place I need to be. Late, I, they asked me why I wasn't on FM radio. I gave them the same reason. Although finally, when I was fired at WMCA, I went to WPLJ, which was FM. But, uh, you know, I, my attitude always was, you know, I got to be somewhere no, they don't want me, basically. <laughs> you know. So, anyway. Well, so that's your home now? It's my home, yeah. They don't want you, so you're Marjorie somewhere. Marjorie doesn't want me here. You know, oh, that's so. another one, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, you know. Um, but... Uh, Otherwise, uh, how's the weather down there? Must be nice. Must be getting nice. It's Florida. Uh, in the 90s. Really? A little rainy today, but generally it's been very nice over the last couple of months. The yeah. only problem the only problem with uh, Florida, the main problem, too many Jews. One problem? You <laughs> too many Jews. You oh, know. come on. Don't don't even. Not in this climate are you saying that to I'm me. I'm Jewish. Know. I don't. It's a big deal. So is my wife. If, if anybody knows Jews, it's me. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. You know, I don't think anybody I knows I was Jews. raised by Otherwise, a Otherwise, we Jew. wouldn't be having the problems in the world we have. You know what? I, you know what bothers me? I got to tell you this. They're having, right up the street from me, they're having big demonstrations at Columbia. I go up there, right. except they have to go up some steps, and I oh, don't know if I could. steps, yeah. I don't know if I could do that anymore. Yeah. No, I don't think you can. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Give me, well, you should it's, encourage listen, me. I'm you telling you say, because I Alex, have done it, you, and it's tough. I have done that's those steps. Tough, and stuff. That's tough, tough, tough stairs, right? Yeah, very tough. Yeah. Anyway. And so I'd go up there because they're demonstrating. And what they're doing is they're demonstrating against uh, Colombia's involvement with Israel financially. I think that's one of the things. But basically what they're arguing against, what's happening in Gaza to the Gazans. And everybody is saying, this is anti-Semitism. What? You're against Israel. So that's anti-Semitic. Boy, are you wrong? You know. I don't I just I mean, don't get the being whole anti Semitic thing. is when you look at me and go, You're a dirty fucking kike. Okay? The, That's anti Semitism. What? With a big nose. Yeah. And I grew up knowing anti Semitism because I grew oh. up in North Beach in San Francisco, which was all Italian. Well, you can grow and I up. I was the only Jew kid in the neighborhood and I used to get it like Cray Jew boy. You know, you can grow up in any part of this country today and 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 hear anti-Semitism. Yeah. So, I mean, I've I've lived with anti-Semitism all my life. And I'm telling you right now, being against Israel is not anti-Semitism. It's anti-Israel. It's anti-Israel. Anti yes. And I don't think there's much to recommend Israel right now. You know, not with 33,000 uh, Gazans dead. Well, hopefully by the time that uh, that this uh, cast is seen by the people who are going to watch it, the, the whole thing will be over. Could be. Could be. But this is going on in a couple of days. So, you know. yeah, unlikely. Yeah. But, but the no, but the point is that up there, they're yelling and screaming, well, we can't have this kind of thing going on on our campus, See, this anti-Semitism. And I don't feel see what they're doing i mean maybe there are a few anti-semitic people in the crowd but uh, i'll give them that but it is not an anti-semitic demonstration it, it's pro-gazan pro-palestinian pro mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that you know and and it's a it's a university where else should you be able to protest and 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 have an ongoing discussion about this problem but the more that they say, well, we're going to push you off out of here and blah, 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 the, the, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. You know, so as a Jew, I'm telling you that what just simply being against Israel is not anti-Semitism. Uh, and and believe you'll, me, have, you'll and, get pushback on that. Yeah, and, yeah, by people who aren't Jewish. 
Uh, no, by also by Jewish people who live in Israel. Oh, well, that's their problem. You know, I mean, I, over the years, everybody said, are you, you want to move to Israel? You're Jewish. And I go, no, I'm an American where I was born and raised. Um, and I'm saying I, I've been the subject of anti-Semitism in my time. And, and quite frankly, I know it when I see it. And I don't, and I've, oh, I, I, I've always had a thing about Israel. It's always been a big problem with me. Yes, I know. Be, you know, I used to talk about mm -hmm. it even on the show at, at Sirius. And, and that is. a big Zionist Bund guy. Well, it, 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 no, I wasn't a Zionist. No, I, I said you're not. You're I'm, not, not a, big, I'm not a Zionist. No. you got to remember that Israel is a Zionist nation. Mm -hmm. Zionism is something I don't agree with. Right. All right. And uh, in fact, Zionism was, Zionism was created by Theodore Herzl back in the 20s. And he was a journalist in, in, uh, in, in London, in England, who kept writing all these articles about how Jews should move back to Israel and whatever and so forth. Now, Theodore Herzl, I don't believe, was Jewish. <laughs> so, you know. I mean, with a name well, like Herzl, you would have I thought just, he was. I just learned the other day that several several members who established the NAACP were not black. Oh, no, so, those, were, those were white well, liberals. So what? Those white liberals that created it. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 they're, and, they're and that's what, why, that's why, because they were being very politically correct in the Times, they called it the National Association for the Advancement of right. Colored People. Okay, so, you know, who came up with that? A bunch of white guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I, don't, I don't know what term they would have used if black people had served, done it, but, you know. I thought Negro was always a very funny term. All right, I'm not going to have this discussion again. We've done this too many times. <laughs> what, what, what you can call people. Well, How about I just remember, people? The reason I, the day I realized it was a funny term was in Animal House. There's a guy who goes into a restaurant or something with a with a. Uh, they went. In, they went into the club where the band was playing. Yeah, yeah, and it's an all black club. Otis Day in the Nights. That's right. Boy, you mm -hmm. do remember, and, and because they like Otis Day in the Nights. Anyway, they're right. there. Because they at played at the frat house. Black, Otis Day played at the frat house. And they took some girlfriends with them, mm -hmm. and at some point, a bunch of black guys show up at their table, and would go off with their dates, and. Somewhere in there, one of the characters says, "The Negroes stole our dates." Right, and, and I, was I suddenly realized that was a very funny term. Okay, I, I don't agree with you on that, but it's well, a good line. Well, Negro, when I grew up, uh, Negro was the term you used. You never, right. you know, you never used the other word. Um, and Negroes were. Um, uh, it, it was a, a non-starter term, you know. It didn't have any negative connotation to it. It's just they were trying to come up with a term for people who were black. And if you call people black in those days, they got mad at you. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I mean, we do have to live with the times and what the, the as they say, the zeitgeist is, what the tempo of the times are. And if uh, the uh, word Negro is not considered proper, then I guess it's not considered proper. I haven't heard anybody say it's not proper. It's just not used any longer. It's an antiquated term. Is, 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 it, is the, the organization still called the United Negro College Fund? Yes. It is? Yeah. So, so how is that proper or improper? Well, I mean, if they're still using those terms... Of course, I mean, I, I, I give them the right that if you're black, you can use the N-word because you're black. You know, just like I can sit here and say, hey, I'm just your friendly local neighborhood kike, you know, because I'm Jewish. I can use that term. I don't I don't buy into that at all. I think that's a bullshit excuse. Well, I don't make I don't call myself a kike. Well, I know. I call myself a goddamn Jew. With a big nose. With a big nose. With a big honker. Is it bigger than it used to be? Uh, it has to be because you're getting older. Really? Is our nose... I noticed mine is getting getting a little big, too. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
But anyway, so I mean, I just, you know, I, 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 when you're talking about anti-Semitism, I've lived with anti-Semitism all my life, and this does not smell of anti-Semitism, okay? Mm. But it does to white people who are not Jewish. So, you know, <laughs> that's it. Hey, listen, I see we've run out of time here. Oh, wow. I, I was hoping we could talk about some more, you know, some more heavy stuff like this. Well, we will next. Another couple of hours. We will next time. Oh, please. Oh, please. You can hardly wait, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the person sitting right there on your screen is Albert Reynoso, and we shall see him soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, 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 everybody. Here I am back again. You notice it's uh, nighttime back here now. It was daytime just a few seconds ago. Anyway, how are you? Good to see you. God, we had a good show last night. That was a really good one. I kind of liked it. And anyway, I have my, uh, my coffee here. There we go. And here's my soda. Okay. Um, I need this because I'm parched. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I use this so much on the air. These guys should send me a case of stuff for free. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, let's. Uh, oh, there's a couple of people waiting to come on here. So let's uh, let's go check our uh, our panel. Here they come. Okay, here we go. And there they are, folks. There's Charlie, and there's uh, uh, Josh, and there is uh, our good friend uh, uh, Brian Neary. And let me admit uh, Alan here for a second. There we go. And uh, well, we have to admit him what? What? Admit, what do we have to admit him? Well, I, because it, you know what it said? It's on, uh, if you look on um, Zoom, it says admit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I use the term. You want me to stop using the term? No. Hmm. Okay, so anyway. Oh my How, God, how's what allergies what where you guys are? Fine with me. Really? I'm not bad here. Not yeah, bad. fall is when our allergies are bad. Fall? Yeah. Yeah. Here, man, like uh, last one day last week, out of, uh, you know, the total of, of uh, 12 that you could possibly get, that's the highest it goes, it was a 12. Hmm. You know. Um, and so my eyes are burning like crazy and nose is... Uh, so you have to excuse me, folks, if I uh, dab my eyes and uh, whatever. That's a horrible idea. What time? Wait a minute, I'm trying yeah, to what time you want to do it? Huh? It's a horrible idea. What time you want to do it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Is that what's one of your newly purchased shirts, or have you had that for a while? I've had just, this one for a while. Oh, I never just never worn it. Yeah. Yes, Alan. Your, uh, your guy that uh, plays a doctor but is not a doctor, you take it, you could take non-drowsy antihistamines when you're home. You yeah, know, I like, know you can. I also have uh, uh, Flonas and things like that. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. or I call it Flonas because it's the kind you get at Costco. That's the same as Flonase, but it's, it works. It's a I call it Flonase. Yeah, it works. It, yeah, it's, it works. It's well, I haven't I haven't done it much lately. I haven't tried it. I really should. You know, it's really good. You know, so that, that, I that but I find that what happens with Flonase is after you use it for a while, it doesn't work anymore. You know, mm. so, mm. what have you. Josh, you the tolerance, how's, huh? how's, <clears throat> your, how's your, uh, uh, <clears throat> you have uh, problems with, uh, uh, you know, uh, pollen down there where you are or over there where you are? You mean me? Yeah. Hmm. And then you drag it in the house, and that's why it's bothering you in the house. So. Josh, can yeah. you hear me? Oh, he can hear. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Do you, ha do you have any pollen problems where you are? Uh, yeah, it's pretty significant here at times, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I think it gets worse. Somebody told me, uh, some doctor, Marjorie's told her every year it's getting worse. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's you know, uh, pretty bad usually. You, you want to know why they think it's getting worse? Global warming? Yeah. Well, that's certainly a good excuse on why it's getting worse. Oh. You know, so... Um, it uh, could be uh, could be a little a little not uh, it, it could be could be getting worse. I I've, I've felt that it's been worse over the last couple of years. Me too. But anyway, so how are you all doing, <laughs> Jeff? Yeah, I got a big thing happen today for me. What happened? Um, I used to work with a lot of people uh, doing engineering work. And the first guy who actually stayed here for, I think, over 25 years, retired. Mm. So everybody had a big group to go out to this uh, local bar, which is close to the office. And they all went out and everybody had a beer or whatever, and then a bunch of pizza and they had a big opportunity a whole bunch of people who came out that we haven't seen in years who uh said some very nice things about this guy his name is ray but the, mm -hmm. well yeah, you don't usually fun. hold a party for somebody retiring and say nasty things about him <laughs> well i'm sure they said that a week before yeah yeah the week before they were saying <laughs> nasty things. boy are we gonna be glad to see that asshole go well <laughs> goodbye bob hey we're gonna miss you yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder if they did that when I left Sirius XM. If they suddenly, oh, he was such a wonderful guy. And, yeah. Uh, boy, are we glad to see him go. Anyway, so. Well, that sounds like you had a nice day. Yeah, it made it nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even have that anymore. I don't know anybody anymore. I don't have any friends. They're all dead. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it happens. what? It happens. It's part of life. Well, I mean, well, if you live long, and you have, right? and you're still healthy enough to, I'm healthy go enough. Take, yeah, take yeah. trips and stuff. So I got the leukemia and stuff like that. You know, but uh, it's uh, the CLL, which is um, the only side effect I think of it is a certain tiredness that I have. You know, but outside of that, I'm, you know. I have to go see my doctor on, uh, what is it, next Monday because uh, my platelets are low and he wants to make sure they haven't gone lower. So, you know, whatever, you know. <sighs> they can give you a blood transfusion. They give you, well, they give you actually, here, here's platelets. What, well, what you take, B12 is very good for that. Yeah, but if your platelets are real low, they can give you just platelets out of you know oh yeah but separate it yeah but they out, they, out. they don't do that till you get down to around you know low. 40 or something like that i'm down around 89 or something and sometimes i've Are been as, really? i've been recently been up at 116 so you know it's it's not it's not any real problem but he just wants to make sure it isn't uh, getting worse that's all good Good. You know, no, with this thing, I'm going to have to see the doctor probably every six months at least to get tested and checked out and so on to make sure it hasn't gotten worse. Yeah. So. But uh, enough you're of my... Out, you're going to outlive all of this. Enough of my health. I know how Brian likes to hear about it. <laughs> but uh, don't you... No, Brian, Frank, uh, one of the old-timer uh, car guys, he was in his... Uh, he to 92 before he passed away and I, every time i'd see him and he was from a small city uh alan was antioch yeah and uh or pittsburgh pittsburgh and uh not uh, pittsburgh california not pittsburgh pennsylvania right. so okay so so he, he he was sort of there he was uh born there went to high school there and they he lived his whole life there and every time i would see him when he was in his 90s, he would just talk about everybody who died <laughs> it's like <laughs> he was so depressed because since he's in that same town, you know, he'd see everybody still and everybody's just passing away. So, yep. 
Yep. Well, that's what happens. That's as you get older, that's going to happen. You're going to be they're going to be people yeah. going, you know. And you just have to <clears throat> somehow say, "Well, lucky me, I'm not one of them." But uh, you know, after a while you go, "Hey, I have nobody to miss anymore." <laughs> you know, so I mean, Marjorie, Marjorie tells me, well, I don't have any friends. And yet every day she's talking to one of her girlfriends on the phone. <laughs> uh, her friends are her doctors. Y no, but no. <laughs> she says, no, she says, I have no friends, no friends anymore. And I go, well, who'd you just talk to? I just talked to Phyllis, you know, and I go, well, isn't that a friend? <laughs> yes. Well, then you still have friends. All mine are pretty much dead, you know. Sometimes friends are overrated. Or, or I, or they're, I, I visit, I see them on Zoom. I don't, they are not available to me, you know. I mean, you guys, I see you guys almost every night, and I, you know, I consider you friends, uh, but mm -hmm. it's weird that I have not seen any of you in person, except for Jeff. Yeah. Except for Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. 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 Please come to California. Come to the Bay Area. We'll take you out to dinner somewhere nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> not you, Jeff. <laughs> I, I would take, take I, I would I would take Jeff out. That's fine with me. <clears throat> well, who was it? Uh, oh, my friend, uh, uh, Buddy Love uh, says, "Come to California, and he will drive us everywhere." I yeah. said I would drive you. And everywhere. you said you would drive us everywhere. Yes, but I got to take you and the McLaren somewhere, and then I got to take Marjorie, and I got to take you somewhere, and then I get Marjorie. So. It'll oh, be a long drive. Oh you, oh, you mean because you can only put <laughs> one other person in the car? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm just kidding. No, my daily driver is like a, like a limousine, so it'll be fine. Oh, you, yeah, your Cadillac. Cadillac. Yeah. You yeah. love that Cadillac, don't you? Yeah, I put a lot of miles on it. I had a Lexus before that, and I put like over 200,000 miles on that until I broke it. And then <laughs> this one's like 150,000, I think, right now. I mean, the best car I ever owned, I think, was the uh, Acura. Mm -hmm. uh, top of not the line. Top not of your the line. 370Z? No, 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 no. T a RL or something, or, you know, one of the, uh, the top one. And I really liked that car. It was like driving around in a living room, you know. <laughs> uh, but it was a good car. It's a really good car. Hmm. But I leased that one. And then I had the uh, Nissan 300Z, you know. And then before that, I had a uh, uh, the Mazda uh, RX-7. And before that, uh, what did I have before that? I can't remember now. I, th I think I bought a Plymouth or something. This is when I first went to California, and I couldn't afford much of a car. So anyway, that that was my, that, but the last car I ever owned was the, uh, the last one I ever sold was the Nissan. So, mm. and then I came to New York, and there was no reason to have a car here, you know. Uh, Does Tony text you when you're on show? No. <laughs> All the time. Every time I get on your show, he's texting me. Well, he doesn't text me. He doesn't. He. he Lucky he, you. Huh. Lucky you. He said he'll be on the show soon. Well, so no, he... I threatened him once if oh he ever, God. you know, because he, 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 listen, Tony's a nice guy. Ah. Okay. Now, I keep trying to tell Marjorie that <laughs> yeah. she doesn't believe me, but uh, Tony's a nice guy. Whenever you start a conversation like this is a nice guy, you know, you're going to blast him next. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. But if you allow him to text you, you get the problems like Alan is having right now, you know? Yep. Uh, and I just told him once, stop texting me. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to have any texts from you because the problem was, it wasn't just that my phone kind of went off with the announcement that Tony was calling. This watch kept vibrating on my wrist every time he would send a note and he would send like two word notes on texts. And, and one after, right after the other, and my wrist is going. Bleh, bleh, bleh. He, he is listening to the show and texting me to what you and it, I are saying. What What do you say? What do you say? Oh, oh well, hold on a minute. There's like eight text messages. <laughs> <laughs> he says. He says. He says. I'm reading. I should call in soon. That's the end of one. Can you time me an In and Out Burger, whatever the hell that means? 
Is that out there? I said, sorry, I'm on the show. Yes, we have them. Nice. We'll call soon. You know, each one of these are different. The line and then yeah. text. They have, uh, I have yeah. a new client, a golden retriever puppy. Alex blocked me. I am nice. Pain in the ass. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's talking about you or him. And he well, says, my, well, brother, he, he, my brother did the same thing that Alex said. Alex is right. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, what I did is I blocked him from uh, uh, Facebook for being able to send me a message on Facebook. He can still text me. Oh, wait a minute, I shouldn't have said that. No. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. anyway. Um, so uh, let me see here. I was trying to think. There was something uh, that came up today. Oh, yeah. If you need a good pizza, okay, you know you can always rely on one pizza delivering service. Donald Trump. <laughs> did you see what he did today? No. Oh, after he got through in court, okay, after he got through in court, he went over, and it was really wonderful what he did. He went to a, 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 a fire station and delivered them two pizzas. That was it. Two pizzas for the whole station? I guess. Yeah, it looked like only two pizzas. Maybe one. I only saw one, but Marjorie could have sworn she saw two. And I'm going, geez almighty, you know, is he that desperate for votes? He's got to buy people off with pizzas? And was, wasn't he at fast food? Or maybe it was the pizza place. But he was there and saying, oh, you're all, you're all Republicans, right? And everybody said, oh, yeah. And <laughs> it's like, that, that group is not Republicans. Yes, when he was president, he had some pro ball team come there and he had McDonald's or Taco Bell or something brought in. No, no, he had a, he did a thing at the White House where he right. he had a pro team come in and he gave the McDonald's hamburgers. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. They were all cold. <laughs> and they were cold by the time they got there. Yeah, right. So uh yeah. that was that was what he did with that. So I just that's what you're referring to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. This was pizzas today. After he was through in court, you know, with that horrible judge, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he, I love, I love what he says about people. It's always the same thing. He can't come up with anything new. Oh, that highly illegal judge, you know. <laughs> I mean, come on. Illegal. Guy's only doing his job for crying out loud, and you're just making it difficult for him. If you didn't make it difficult for him, he'd be a lot nicer to you. The, yeah, the yeah. judge has got a lot more power than he thinks. Well, he has the idea he has the ultimate power. Yeah. Right? Oh, as soon as I get to be president, I'll fire this judge. <laughs> Can't even do that. You nope. Know? No, a judge is important as a life. He's a state judge, not a federal. Oh, that's right. He's a state judge. So I, uh, is he a state or is he is he a state judge or a city judge? Uh, I he think is he state. is a state judge. Yeah. Yeah. Either or way, yeah. the president's got no authority over him. Yeah, it's it, they're holding it in the Supreme Court building, which is where <laughs> I had my thing. Granted, mine didn't have the uh, the newsworthiness of the Trump trial, but for me it was important. You know. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Did you fall asleep during the trial? Uh, or fart? Uh, well, did you it, fart? It, it, no, I didn't fart. <laughs> should have. Maybe you got on TV. Yeah, well, maybe I should have farted. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh my God. Here, here I am, sad and departed. Tried to shit, but only farted. <laughs> <laughs> what? You never heard that one? Yeah. It's always it's, funny. <laughs> it's always funny. The, the classics are always worthy. Yeah. Um, I mean, how much can you, uh, Josh, how much can you, like, uh, screw with a judge before he finally just gets so disgusted he throws you in jail for the rest of your life? <laughs> you know? It depends on the judge, but, yep. I mean... Probably not real far. I mean, I wouldn't well, really want to find out. Well, I mean, what he, what, you know, 
what he's saying about the judge, he shouldn't be saying simply because it's right. not true. This judge has been more tolerant to him than he would be to you or me if we did exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, a person has their right to certain statements and, you know, and all those things, but there, the state, the government also has a right to impose the gag orders in certain cases. Well, and, you know, you've got to follow that kind of stuff. Well, especially where the person who uh, is is gagged, as it were, is showing no restraint in changing mm -hmm. in in his uh, in his uh, mm -hmm. public statements. And you know, mm -hmm. I mean, come on, you know, I had my judge, for instance, in the case that I had, the landlord threatened him, Ooh. literally threatened him. And I'm thinking, do you, what what makes them what makes somebody do this? And I think it's that they feel they have a certain hall pass or something in life, and they don't see how this judge has any real, you know, power. But hey, they can they can throw the book at you, you know. Well, they have tremendous power in most cases, you know. So uh... and they don't like to use it, by the way. Well, right. I mean, it just makes, I mean, look, it's like a joke, but not even, look, it just makes for more work and more paperwork for everybody. I mean, let's just get the business at hand out of the way. Let's not add to our workload, right? Right. <laughs> I mean. Well, well, Trump wants to get out of there. Trump doesn't like being in court. In fact, he looks absolutely miserable, doesn't he? Well, yeah, and, and then dragging it out is not the way to go, but, but they are dragging it out. They're, they're the ones making it take as long as possible. I mean. You know, I, I believe the state has had to present testimony of expert witnesses to just verify evidence, such as uh, the defense in this case is not stipulated, in my understanding is, is not stipulated to any of the evidence as being evidence. In other words, is this letter, this statement found in your office from Stormy Daniels, this, nope, 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 not ours, not ours. So then they got to have an expert come up and say, yeah, that's theirs and here's why. Because the paper and that it was written on and the fingerprints and blah, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. kind of making that part up. I'm just saying they they fight every single fact of the case. They're not even just arguing the case. They want to argue every single everything. They're not stipulating to anything is my understanding. So they're the ones making it take, you know, as long as possible. I'm sure they're hoping this bores the jury to death or whatever and that they think oh we just want to get the hell out of here you know and they'll stop paying attention or whatever you know uh, maybe that's their goal but you know or, or their I don't, goal we is don't know where the boring. case is headed but it, this is all he, he brings this on himself and you know getting the judge aggravated is look I don't know anybody that would think that's a good thing to do yeah, <laughs> right. yeah no okay, other than maybe him you know, yeah. But, that's it. I mean, you could pretty much ask anybody if you were in a criminal trial. Mm -hmm. do, do you think it would be to your benefit to agitate the judge by acting like a clown during your court proceeding? <laughs> There's no one that would answer that question. Yes. Yeah. You well, know. <laughs> so. Well, in the case of uh, in Goran, with the last case that he had in New York, you know, he could have had a jury trial. But his crack lawyer team uh, yeah. uh, forgot to file. <laughs> in order to, yeah. So uh, he had to have a judge determine his fate. And he just did nothing but just provoke the judge over and over and over again. What did he expect? Right. You know? No, you go, yes, sir, no, sir. You know, you, you respect the judge. Yep. You know? Yeah, he's getting a little taste of it. I mean, you know, the look, he's in a situation now where, and he's going to be in a few more of these, that he's not ever really had to be in. I mean, he is sitting in a courtroom now, and if he wants to get up and leave, he's not allowed. I mean, you know, he's temporarily detained while he's on trial, right? If he were to want to get up and just walk out, he's not allowed to do that. So I'm sure that's not... I think if he farts a few more times, they might tell him to leave. Maybe. You know. But, you know, I'm sure that's not nice for him, but he's going to have to get used to it because he's going to have a couple more of these to sit through, it sounds like. So, 
at some point, I mean, look, when you act like a criminal. Well, I love the thing that he said that I, what you get? Uh, uh, I forget what date it is. He has to have the day off because he has to go to his son's graduation. No, I, I, you know, if I were a judge, I'd say, sure, we'll not hold court that day, so you can go do it. But the judge let him keep hanging by by his toenails on this deal, and finally yeah. said, yes, you can go. But he was making a big deal about, it. I can't go to my son's, I can't even go to my son's, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 graduation. Well, and I'm thinking, screw you, you know, you, you weren't planning on going in the first place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plenty of things that we miss in life for all kinds of reasons. I think it'd be, I think it would be funny if on that day some, some, Camera journalist catches them playing golf. That would be good, yeah. Yeah, you better go to your son. You better, you know, she, and he'll probably fall asleep just, while farting in that too. Oh you my! Know. It just took what I was going to say. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> See, I end up falling asleep and farting anyways. Jeez. <laughs> Can oh. the judge hold Rick attempt a quarter if he keeps passing gas? Like Jesus. I don't, <laughs> He's I don't know. How far along the progress is mm -hmm. with the trial. I don't know if it's quarter way, halfway, well, I'm not sure, but I mean... I think it has another three or four weeks to go. I, I wish not, but I mean, you know, this circus is just going to go on and on, you know, for, we're going to have to live like this until basically till November, until we can get some kind of definitive answer, you know, on what the hell is going to happen. I was I was trying to one or the other. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering um, how the trial is going to turn out. I mean, what is the jury thinking at this point? You know, I want to go home. Well, no, the well that that's what happens with juries too. Yeah. You know, if they're if they're like with OJ's, they came back in three hours. Why? Yeah. They wanted to go home. <laughs> you know. Uh, find him not guilty. Let's get the hell out of here. Who cares if she ki he killed her? You know, uh, I mean, but um, this jury, will, well, this jury will probably have their minds made up by the time they're through with the trial. In fact, they say a lot of juries have made their mind up on the first day. Maybe you know the opening statements usually set the tone for each case. Uh, I've been in a lot of courtrooms and criminal trials in my career, and mm -hmm. you know, you, you he's prolonging this thing, and the jurors they have jobs, they have family and stuff, and they're going to be pissed at him too, and it, it makes a better chance that they're going to find him guilty, not not guilty. Well, so. uh, he wants to go to jail because he figures that'll make him a martyr, and people will vote for the martyr. And that's probably why they have. And I think he's wrong. I think they don't want to vote for a guy who's guilty of something. Yeah. I, I, I think what's going to happen is, see, he's got to, if he gets put in jail or gets found guilty on this thing and doesn't get put in jail, he needs, he needs the independents, the people that haven't decided to Biden or Trump. But if he gets found guilty or goes to jail for whatever reason, a lot of those people will vote for Biden. You think so? Yeah, yeah. I think so. They, yeah, because at, at that it. point, they don't want to vote for a guy for president who's been <clears throat> found guilty of a criminal act. Right. Which this would be, <clears throat> you know. That's my thought. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, I, I, we were talking last night about the schools and uh, the demonstrations, and we don't really have to get deep into that mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. But I think... Trump's real, I mean, Trump or Biden is handling this badly. You know, I mean, he should be definitive about it one way or the other. You know, but he seems like he's waffling in the middle. On on Who, Biden or Trump? Biden. 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 It's hurting him. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he he sat here tonight. I'm watching the news. He's doing the giving his speech, and he's going, and the you know we can't stand for the destruction of property. And I'm going to look over Marjorie. Well, he just lost my vote, mm -hmm. you know, because quite frankly, I don't think property should ever be the issue. Property is just, it doesn't have a soul, it doesn't have a life. 
Meanwhile, you're talking about 33,000 people are dead in Gaza. Those are human beings. They're not furniture. You know? We don't have control over the, the, the war in Gaza. Well, we have a control over it in that. We are supposedly... He needs, he needs to be more aggressive with, with uh, I wanted to say Putin, with uh, uh, Netanyahu. That, uh, I'm saying I think that he's too. been too wishy-washy with Netanyahu. Well, you know what it is? I think it is, a, you talk about anti-Semitism in this country. I think it's an anti-Semitic notion. we got to be nice to the Jews because they have money. Oh, and I think that's an anti-Semitic attitude. Absolutely. But that's the reason why they don't want to piss off the Jews here in America. Because there are a lot of what I call Chaim Yankles. These guys that, you know, oh, Israel's wonderful. I'm a Jew and Israel's wonderful. Well, it, it, you shouldn't necessarily like Israel because you're a Jew, you know. Uh, <laughs> you're a Jew because that's what you were born and uh, that is your heritage and uh, you should never deny it. You should be very proud of it. But, you know, when there's a nation that calls itself a Jewish nation you sh and they're doing bad, you have every right to comment against it, you know. And, um, but I'm just, uh, you know, it, it's just, it, it, I think Biden is in a bad position right now. And so the question here is, Josh, if you were president of the United States, what position would you take on Israel? Well, well, for, for, I'm, from I'm a politi from a, let me say this, from a politically advantageous position. Well, I think that, you know, he he needs to be pushing the Israelis to get leadership in place that's going to look for a permanent solution to this problem, mm -hmm. which is really more than likely a two-state solution. I mean, they need to look forward to what they're going to do when this is over, and I don't think, you know, Netanyahu is the person for them, so I would certainly be trying to talk to the Israeli people, maybe a little bit directly, mm -hmm. you know, and, and mentioning to them that Netanyahu's vision of, you know, eliminating Hamas forever is in itself fine. Hamas is a terrorist organization. Yeah. Not against the elimination of a terrorist organization. In fact, I'm for it. In fact, we will assist with that in any way we can. But there is going to be a day after. And it is never too soon to start thinking about the day after. In fact, history teaches us that many mistakes have been made by people who didn't think about the day after in time because they kept saying, well, we have plenty of time before that. we got to do the first job first. Somebody has to be thinking about what comes next. And the United States should be willing to help, you know, take care of that and, and broker that deal. And, you know, should be indicating that Netanyahu is not really the person who needs to remain in power for that to happen. And they need to be looking to who can and forming a cabinet that can both prosecute the war and begin their own type of little bit of a reconstruction there in a way because that's that's going to be what they're they're going to they're going to need you know mm -hmm. in my opinion they need a solution that is going to stop they can't do this every couple of years you well, know you think about this it's been going on since 1948 right okay it's been going on since 1948 without a solution mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. every president who's been in power has attempted to come up with a solution, and every last one of them has failed. Uh, and and uh, I just think that it's time for Israel to realize that they have to come up with, with some kind of solution so that they can feel safe where they are in the Mideast. You Correct. Know? They, I mean, you know, and and many of them would be against a, a, a two-state situation, for example, because they don't want to give up any territory whatsoever, not even one square little inch, not even a flower. And, and okay, but that's not we a keep, we keep, realistic. Yeah, we keep hearing about a two-state solution. Uh, would you explain to people what a two-state solution is? Well, I, I mean, I think the Palestinians are going to have to be set up as a legitimate, separate, and sovereign country that doesn't operate under this sort of overlord Israeli umbrella or whatever. 
They need a legitimate government. Hamas is not a legitimate government, okay? You know, they need a serious governmental system, parliamentary, whatever. They need elected representatives. They need to operate as a legitimate state. Yeah. You know, with with equal footing in the world trade and things of that nature so that they can support themselves economically and politically uh, so that their people do not turn to organizations such as Hamas or outside influences such as Iran or whatever for survival, you know, or for a sense of pride and belonging, you know. I mean, they are turning to the Iranians, many of them, in the same reason that, you know, inner city people turn to a gang because it provides them with things they otherwise well, would not have. Well, when you talk about sense of belonging, that's, a ve that's very important. Yeah. And uh, the only people that are giving them a sense of belonging are places like Iran, is Hamas, is uh, Hezbollah. And mm -hmm. if they felt that Israel respected them, okay, <laughs> And that they uh, that uh, they were going to do everything they could to make them have their own state. I mm -hmm. think they would change who they were doing business with. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it's not uh, necessarily too much different from the way the Egyptians and the Syrians treated the Israelis in their genesis, right? I mean, there was a time when the Egyptians. Uh, you know, where the Syrians, I believe, wouldn't even refer to Israel as the state of Israel or the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think they actually used that terminology until, well, what was it, the late 70s or whatever, under uh, mm -hmm. uh, their prime minister, Golda, or, or you know, oh, in, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, in that small war that they had when they signed that peace agreement. I believe it was the first time they what had ever it, what was it, the, said out loud or put their name on a piece of paper that listed Israel as a legitimate state. Well, wait a minute. How, how long was that war? Was it eight days, if I remember? Yeah, I, you know, I, well, I, they had the sixth day, but I don't remember if this was a separate, you know, action after that or, or whatever. I, I mean, just know. Oh, it's just that Israel marched in there and won. And then they, yeah. gave, and then they gave the land back to Egypt. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, Israel suffered a lot of setbacks and losses, you know, at the beginning of that. And, you know, I know that Kissinger uh, tried to help broker some, you know, deals and things of that nature. But, you know, the Israelis mostly worked it out a lot for themselves. But I just think the the point or the parallel to it was just a little bit. I mean, nothing is always exactly the same, but I'm just saying there was a time when their enemies didn't recognize Israel either and made, you know, and turned up their nose and treated them as a stray dog. And things between mm -hmm. the Egyptians and the Israelis and the Syrians, et cetera, didn't improve any until at least that point, after a military action, when the adversary began to say, okay, we recognize you as a legitimate state. And... You know, maybe when this is all over, many of us are still going to hate you in our heart, but we're going to swallow that and shake hands when there's cameras around and let people travel yeah. between our states and let, you know, our economies operate, you know, for the good of all of our people. You know, I'm I mean, look, the only thing that happens in war is people get hurt and die. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, That's a fact. I'm I'm kind of interested in this. Brian, Adrian is what, eight years old now? Yeah. Um, how much does she know about what's going on? <laughs> Even the high schoolers don't know. I don't know. You know yeah, I, I haven't asked him about this subject, but... You know, when other things come up, even when the whole, even when Trump and Biden and, and the whole, oh, we stole my this election and all that stuff, they they don't hit topics like that you know there are some good topics they do well, talk in the, about in the case of adrian let's face it she when the, when the whole oh, thing then adrian whole thing is happened. learning adrian is learning double digit addition and subtraction is it true but, but that, even but even the high schoolers they they don't know about all this stuff it's well high schoolers should I mean, know about this ask stuff. kevin too i mean kevin <laughs> is girls in college now so they're going through all that stuff but in high school, man, it just doesn't seem like they they take a side either way, at least here. 
you know, or or even educate that there's two sides or, or there's this thing going on. It's like yeah. they're blind to it when Trump was going on. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Tony. This may sound old school by me, but Brian, in high school and even elementary school, I remember Alex in elementary school. Every Friday we used to do current events. Where we oh, yeah. To, do they still do that where I used to have to cut out? I don't think so. Because and then write you know, an essay on funny. it and then go up to class and do it. Yeah, it's funny, Tony, because uh, I have some of my old school papers that I've been going through, and I have like a whole binder on China. Oh, there you go. Was, I remember doing it, was, it on Jimmy Carter, Alex. Yeah, it was all China stuff, and we had to cut out articles from the newspaper yes. once yeah. a week, like Tony Tape says, it. about I'm China. Trying. I used to get excited for that, Alex. Yeah, so I got all these well, current events. We, they yes. don't go through I current events. Hey, here's, a, here's a question I have to you, because Marjorie brought this up the other day, because we're talking about it. as we're getting older, our handwriting is starting to become just a blur, you know. Uh, as you get, uh, you know, because uh, yeah, I can't I even little, script anymore. Yeah, I have a little. Well, here's the thing. Marjorie mentioned they're not teaching cursive in school anymore. Is that no. true? <laughs> they weren't doing that long years ago. Yeah, my kids never learned to write cursive. Yeah, my sister's a teacher. They don't. That's out the door, Alex. So yeah. what do they do when they got to sign their signature? Just print it. They print, print. it. Yeah. Well, when they're younger, yeah. yes, yeah, they do they, they a lot of. Gee. Yeah, my my tax preparer basically told me that you know anyone under 30 that they did they just write their name on their tax document or whatever my my really? My, really? my account oh my sends me a thing where i just click on something and it puts my name in there like it's i wrote it but they don't people care. that come into our office can't they can't sign it or whatever <laughs> but they don't care anymore I mean, I basically, not. if I just put X on my, you know, I'd endorse this check the other day. If I just put an X there, it probably would have gone through. Because that thing I put on the back of it didn't look like my signature. Yeah, I anymore. can't even do mine. My brother yeah. gave me money. I can't well, even do Well, but I got a little bit of arthritis in this hand. And, you know, I, as you get older, you just get... What happens is my last name, Schwarzman. It's like That's gonna be hard, I can right? write Bennett okay in a lot of cases. But then when I get to the Schwarzman, I just go S C H. Yeah, you know. It, I, hey Alex, remember I was going to ask you too. What's a godsend? No, a I can't script. You know what you could use? What I use invaluable when I run my games and stuff. I like using Thank God for the computer for Microsoft Word and Excel. I I mean I use Word all the time when I want to write stuff up, and then I'll just edit it really. Yeah, but how do you sign it? Oh, I, I yeah I print it. I mean that's just for my gaming group. Like I'll print. I mean I can't do script anymore at all. I just print. I can't, you know. So they yeah. taught my daughter. Uh, they wow. taught my daughter cursive. You taught your daughter oh, cursive. She, she signs her name. <laughs> yeah, she. Well, plus she's an artist, so she signs her her art in cursive too. Yeah, <laughs> but certain but areas. If you, whatever. It, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's, it depends on the area. I know that they do that yeah. now, and, and they have current events at the school too. They have a a time of the day, and they also send their kids, make their kids go to. Uh, local government, uh, you know, council meetings and stuff like that, and they have to go there and sit there for an hour and report out what's going on at the local government, and then to get their paperwork stamped by the local, you know, once they've been there for an hour, they can they take a break for the city council or the the uh, high school district meeting or whatever. It's a local government meeting they have to attend for their their classes. Yeah. at least once a week and they have to go up and they get it signed and then they get it stamped then they take it back and they got to report out on what they saw and what they heard and all that stuff mm -hmm. so you know maybe it's just a different area but they're all into that stuff down mm -hmm. here i know that yeah but what do people do today who can't do cursive do they print do people yeah. know how to print That's they must know how to print yeah. Well, yeah. What do they do anymore? They they type everything. Computer. They were doing like yeah. a computer to print it out. Because right? I remember in school up up on the. Oh yeah, the you wall. had the two lines with the with the dotted mm -hmm. line in the middle. The wall, yeah. the wall, yeah. and across the wall was this thing with cursive on it. You know, A, yeah. B, C, D. Yeah, and there was a double line with a dotted line in the middle, and that was the center, and you had to cross it at a certain point, yeah. and the whole bit. I yeah. missed that. Yeah, I used to enjoy that. Yeah. Remember that? Do you guys oh, do you remember the, uh, memories? Do you remember yeah. the uh, on the on the desk? I remember. I told my sister this. They had the uh, the numerical line with the numbers. You know, subtract. It was. I remember like first grade. They had like a sticker on the desk and it had one to fifty or whatever it was. And then you'd be like, she put a 
here's 10 and then you would learn backwards and forwards like that like easier visually i remember the most i remember that i the remember number the most terrifying thing what in school for me when uh, they called it? well this was like in maybe i don't know fourth grade third okay. grade or whatever mm -hmm. but they would have us take a piece of paper and then they would have us fold it so there were like four different columns mm -hmm. you you remember this brian Trying to think what they were making. Yeah, or columns are going to Colum columns rows. down, and then oh, they columns. would the the teacher would say, "Okay, two times two, and he would have to put in the amount, and then three oh, times four, and things oh. like that, and and you would just take the test that way." Well, hmm. I was so frightened of this, really, that my hand was shaking so badly, yeah, nervous, I couldn't yeah. write down the answers. That's so you might have been a bad test taker, Alex. You probably knew the work. Terrible you just test taker. Yeah, I some was people are like that. Hated yeah. math. Math, math was the worst for me. Hated it. I and remember third grade. I had Miss Leventhal. She taught us. I think she taught us. Yeah, she did tell you timetables. I might have learned in second. But and she used time to snap tables, her fingers three learn, times three and had, be like oh, nine. No, but you had to learn time table times she tables. Tough. You had to learn by rote. Yeah. Okay. And and by the way, let me tell you one other thing. When I learned how to read. Mm. I was taught a thing called look see. What's that? Not phonetics, but look see. Mm. In other words, the word dog looks like this, the word oh. cat looks like this, and I never was able to just take the words and work them out by phonetics, phonetically. And so yeah. when I finally went into radio and I had to read commercials, that was hell for me. I was going to say that probably was tough to read. Yeah, I had to reteach myself how to read. So you were visually learning words then? The, it, yes, that was called look see. They thought that wow, was the way to look that up. I got to ask my sister that. And about f 10 years later, or five years later, even, they changed to uh, uh, phonetics. But meanwhile, I got screwed up. Yeah. You but, know? Uh, they were <laughs> learning the English language in schools when you went to school, right? <laughs> Look, see, I never heard of this work. See, I'm just giving you a hard time. So, you never heard of look, see? No, I'm gonna look it up right. I'm gonna, I'm going down for my sister. I'm gonna He's ask gonna look, see it up. <coughs> Do you know what I'm talking about, Brian? Heck no. Oh, okay, we're too young. I guess I've now aged myself out of this group. <laughs> I don't know, Jeff's older than you, but is you, you know, I had I... <laughs> he's not older than me. Oh, you know, shit, Brian. <laughs> Trying to age you, Jeff. What's that? Jeff's older than me. No, Jeff's Je Jeff's a youngster. He calls me sir when we get together and have dinner. That's right. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. <laughs> it's because who's are you paying the bill, Alex? I would say the same thing. Oh, uh, sir, can I have dessert with this? Could I have dessert, please, sir? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't worry, Tony. You will never eat dinner with Alex. No, never, never, <laughs> never. Take well, I go. would do it. I would do it, Tony. Only Marjorie can't stand you, so it's, <laughs> you know it's it's a problem. Alex, you have me pegged because I did the same thing with my brother with the phone with the watch. What, he said exactly I, what you said. Does everybody know how I first met up with Tony? No. How'd you do that? Tony used to call the show uh, at Sirius XM, and yes. so then we got this apartment and we held a. Um, you know, a, a what do you call it, party? You yeah, had a lot of people over, Alex. I mean, you had like a housewarming party. Housewarming Let party. Let him tell the story, Tony. I'm sorry. Housewarming party. So, uh, Shecky says to him, You want uh, me to come? Uh, 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 and I can't remember where he said it or wherever, but he said, If you'll wear footy pajamas, uh, we'll let you come. You yeah, Checky and, wanted me to come. He says, you got to come. I says, because I think he wanted to meet me to see if I'm normal. And he goes, yeah, he said, you got to come. I was a little embarrassed to come because I was like, I'm going to meet Alex. But I never, I was a little embarrassed because I'm coming from Queens. I didn't really know anybody. Well, shut up. I didn't want you here. But anyway. I know, but I figured I got to go. He invited me. Anyway, so it was that Shecky, Shecky kind of went, oh, come on. We can't invite we got to invite Tony. We he was to, nice about we it. we got to find out what this guy is like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because so, you're normal, So really. we invited you to my uh, Yeah. He said he let me come over party. his house. <laughs> you know. You know, wasn't like, it that party? Yes. Wasn't my it brother that probably, probably used to say that to him. Wasn't it the party that Chucky had to talk you off the ledge? No. No, when Tony was there. Alex, I talked me off the ledge. Remember? 
Yeah. I, I, gotta, I can follow I, up on that story. Uh, I told my mother I was going to Alex's house. She says, she did say this, God rest her soul. Because she doesn't know radio other than the local guys in New York. She says, does he know how it started? I says, kind of, Ma. She you know, it's all, she says, we got, you got to go over there with something good. So we went to my mother's bakery, Fortune Hours in Brooklyn, yeah. which is 10 minutes away. And I bought the striped cookies to bring over to you because those are our favorites here. Yeah. yeah. So you see, it's like, uh, you got to bring good cookies over what, there. Uh, what, what, what could be so bad about you? Okay. You bring I'm cookies. A pain. No, you're right. I am a pain. Yes. I admit that. You know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a nudge is what it is, I think. Yeah, I mean, you're not even Jewish, and you brought cookies. Yeah, exactly, you know? yeah. My mom's got to bring something good. It's, what you mean? Get the striped cookies. They, yeah, I got to love those. That's all right, man. Huh? We'll yeah. yeah, but, you know, I mean, that that's nice how too. I first met you. And, and I thank you for inviting me. That and was I very think that's the last time I've ever been in the same room with you. And No, no, I went to the other show. Remember you invited me into the city? To what? When you did the, uh, the, the, the Gabinet, like when you were doing the live thing from the studio. What? Yeah, remember you told me to come down. I came down. Yeah, I was there. Were you here, really? Why yeah, I was there doing... in the city. Remember you said, come on down. So I said, all right, I'll come down. Like when I was I doing this... where, where You told me where it was, and I took the train in. When I was doing this show? Yeah, in the city. I forgot at that studio. No, no, wait a minute. Oh, you mean Sirius XM? No, no, the other one. When you got off of oh. Sirius, you were doing at that oh, other oh, show. Oh, the, yeah, the, uh, the TV thing from the studio. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess we did have you down there. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. see how forgettable you are? That was exactly. I don't blame you, Alex. Yeah. I knocked myself out too about you. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sorry about anyway. that. But, uh, uh, you know, I just, uh, uh, it's just, everything is just so strange these days. I mean, God, I'm, you know, I do really, folks, feel that we really have a secure democracy. I'm Let afraid. Let me ask Josh. Win, Josh is good on this. Yeah. Secure democracy, Josh. Well, I think that we do, but it's up against significant challenges. Didn't Jefferson or somebody like that say you only have a democracy as long as you want it? I don't you know, or something to that effect that you got to work you know, at it. You can't just take a uh, take. Well, it for I think ever I think all of that generation would have said you've got to work at yeah. it, and you've got to work to keep it, and you've got to do your part. You know, I think they all would have agreed on that for sure. Yep. Did they? Did they back then think that the democracy would last as long as it has? I would yeah. say no. I mean, I I think a lot of them thought that it would uh, succumb to the mob, which a little bit it has. <laughs> kind of has. That it would uh, that it would fail. You know, I'm seriously. I, I think a lot of them really feared democracy. I mean, democracy to them meant mob rule, and mob rule to them meant not good because the mob is not smart. The mob is reactionary. They will not think things out. They will not think about the next day, the day after, what comes after we do this. They will just want their cookies and they'll want them right now. You know, and well, this we also guy's had a very bad them. example at the time because uh, shortly after the French helped us out with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, war um hmm. they um uh the, the, france suddenly went into its situation sure, and people were getting were, their heads chopped off you know well, so they, they were a monarchy to a democracy back to a monarchy yep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah yeah it was a bad sign right you know mm -hmm. i mean and so uh, that so i think they were in fear of something like that you know? sure right yeah i mean that, look they were always nervous about democracy which is why that they're set up for government is not necessarily a 100 percent democracy it yeah. is a public it is a republican form you know little r of government that is a democracy through the elected representatives because those representatives were supposed to be the time delay of mob rule that mm -hmm. is why the senate is so cumbersome you know i mean it was you know things were designed to go slow and take time and have to be thought out and it was required to have uh extra hurdles if you wanted to make major changes you know it was so the minority could never rule the majority but also so the majority could never tyrannize the minority it mm -hmm. was the genius of both ways you know what i'm saying yeah. so you know but that in itself 
comes with risk uh, that are present all the time and that Americans through their good sense and patriotism have always avoided and you know at right now it's very it's very challenged you know so mm-hmm. uh, you know Trump is a mob ruled kind of guy you know uh, and that's not it's not healthy well, for he our, shouldn't our... be allowed to run for president there should be rules against that you um, know there are, I mean, rule. he supposedly in, uh, what was it, Time Magazine this week, stated all the things he planned to do if he becomes yeah. president. And it's, no, it's, look, it's not, it's, it's scary. Not good. And, it's and, scary. And I'm not, Did you read that? I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to make, you know, a close analogy here, but I was driving around, I don't know if it was yesterday or something, and I was listening to something he said, and I know what people think. And I mean, look, <laughs> Wonder if this is how people felt in Germany, and you know, I don't know. Let's call it 1936. Mm. You know, but th- before things were what we knew they became. Uh, by the way, by the way, you've been upstage now by. Uh, I see that. By. You know. Adrian, do you know cursive? Do they teach you cursive? No, they teach no. me cursive in third grade. Oh, in third well, they grade. They do teach you cursive in third grade. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. One class. Oh, okay. Good. What grade are you in now? Second. Huh? Second. Oh, two. So in three, you will get cursive. Good. Depends if I get one class. Yeah. That's Adrian, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, she Ow. is. Huh? Nothing. Huh? Okay. Oh, okay, now you can go. No, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember what grade they taught us curses. I don't even remember. I think third grade is about right, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe they're still doing it. I'll have to tell Marjorie she's in wrong. California, anyway, not in Texas. Huh? <laughs> well, they show it to you, but they don't force you to use it because the typewriter and computers, you know. Yeah. I think it's more important that they teach you how to type today. You know, oh, yeah. and when it comes to it is to um, um, add addition and subtraction, things like that, mm-hmm. all they should need to do is teach you how to use a calculator. <laughs> no, because uh, if, if you it, remember <clears throat> when we were in school, when we were in school, it was always the girls that learned how to type. The guys didn't. Right, because yeah. they were going to be secretaries. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I was the only guy in the class. Right, but there and was you very, enjoyed you know, every very minute few of it. did. <laughs> yeah. Patrice O'Neill, he has a great little thing about typing. You know, he's saying all all the all the, all the all the more feminine kids were going and doing typing. He goes, I ain't doing no stupid typing classes. And right. then he says, Now I get now I can't type. I'm trying to type away. Exactly. Women. I'm still <laughs> hunting back. You know, it hunting took back. me so long just to say hello. Jesus, she starts <laughs> typing all this stuff back and forth. Oh, and also so also in those days when I was gonna if I was gonna learn typing, you had to learn it on a manual typewriter. Yeah. Which was a pretty arduous clunky thing oh, very yeah. clunky yeah my my very grandmother oh, i don't have it now my, my grandmother was uh, was an author and uh, uh she had file cabinets full of all these stories that she had done and, and all typed oh my god mm-hmm. i looked at that even when i was a kid just looking at oh god how many hours but my mother was a great typist she was just terrific you know <laughs> but she worked as a secretary you know yeah. which was the only job really open to women in those days and they should have been happy with it, but they weren't. And now they run <laughs> a corporation. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, I uh, I got the theme plan here. Uh, it's it been another nice night tonight. This week's been really good. I hope tomorrow's just as good. And then we can say we had a perfect week this week. You know, Ooh. let me get this microphone out of the way. I always complain about microphones being in the shot. Anyway, thank you so much, Charlie. Really appreciate your participation tonight as well as our old friend Josh, who's been here two nights in a row now. Are you going to get well, here? I'm going to work this weekend, though. So. Are you going to come by tomorrow uh, night at all? No, I can't. i got to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to see you Saturday either, right? Nope, not this Saturday, but I will be around the next one. Okay. And also, thank you, Brian, and thank you to uh, Alan. I really appreciate it. Jeff, good having you here. Uh, uh, Kevin, 
terrific. By the way, enjoyed that uh, that uh, uh, letter from your the staff uh, or the the dean's office or whoever up in Oregon State. I guess is the Their name pres- of the school. Huh? The president. Their president. It yeah. was it was a good way of trying to you know tamp things down a little bit. It was a, yeah. it's a great letter. Uh, also, thank you very much, Tony. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. That's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. And uh, this is me for tonight, folks. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Amy Manuel is next. She's here with the intersection, and uh, she will be here uh, taking your calls at uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.